Gifted and talented, a phrase that I still truly wouldn't be able to define if I had to. Well, luckily for me, Google provided a pretty simple definition of having exceptional talent or natural ability. But what exactly deems these words a label? What does it mean to be labeled as such? Similar questions apply to the gifted and, lear gifted and talented learning program in many schools throughout the United States. My goal today is to teach you how the gifted and talented program works, what's missing from the program and education in general, and my secret to growing through bad habits to find semi-success in high school. There seems to be just one criteria to place into the gifted and talented program, which is the COGAT, or Cognitive Abilities Test. When I took this test as a second grader, I didn't even know what it was, which meant I wasn't really learning from it. After I placed in GT, along with many of my friends, I loved the idea of making the exciting journey just a few yards down the hall for my classmates, who were meanwhile learning how to excel on their own by working hard. Soon, I realized I didn't really need to take school seriously, and I wish I could have known how wrong I was about that. What the GT program is intended to provide is a challenging classroom environment under the assumption that the work taught in the regular classroom is too easy or too boring for some students. And while that's a great idea in theory, as an elementary schooler, I didn't see that. I, now, my teacher did everything she could to help us read at a high level and solve math problems quickly, but what wasn't in the curriculum was the importance of all this work. And while our, meanwhile, while our classmates down the hall were learning that hard work brings reward, retreated it like an unnecessary task to be ignored. I started the same, I started middle school with the same poor mindset. And after the excitement of being in a new school wore off, I began to notice a slip in my grades. I felt like the standards I was used to receiving were just a bit too far out of my reach. I became confused, frustrated, and anxious about school and grades in general. And the worst part was that I didn't know what I was missing that everyone else seemed to have down. Soon, feelings of anxiety and depression that I'd always been able to push away became more and more frequent as I continued a cycle of never quite reaching my goals. My parents tried to help out as much as they could, asking me what assignments needed to be done each night and how they could help me. But instead, I brushed off their questions, shrugged, and figured that whatever I had to be done could be done in the morning. Now, that's not to say that many students, if not all of them, don't struggle with procrastination at some point in their school career. However, every pro professional procrastinator knows that there's a reason that probably seems valid at the time. My reason was that I had an unhealthy mindset that I wouldn't need to work hard for anything. I just didn't know it yet. As I continued this cycle, of not ever reaching my goals. Years passed by and I struggled. I became confused, anxious, and I turned in, part, I turned in late work for partial credit, retook tests to get even a slightly higher score, and finished projects the day before they were due. I skated by freshman year and when selecting classes to take for sophomore year in the fall, I chose AP Biology against the judgment, my own judgment, and the advice of my teachers, parents, and school counselor. <laughs> when AP Bio started in the fall, I treated it just the same as I treated any other class since middle school. However, as the only sophomore in a class full of juniors and seniors at a college level, it needed to be taken much more seriously. One day, after being assigned a difficult poster project, which I once again waited until the last minute to complete, having spent, it, having spent hours distractedly researching online, I remembered something my teacher had told us at the beginning of the year. She said that if we knew how to study right, that everything we needed for the class could be found in the textbook. My textbook had found a place under my bed collecting dust. However, at this moment, I ran up the stairs, flew the door open to my room, grabbed my textbook from under my bed, dusted it off, and read it for hours. 
I carefully annotated the information, highlighted keywords, underlined, summarized, and read the parts that didn't make sense until they did. Then I got to work on my poster right away. I used a ruler to make sure the spaces in between the information was the same. I used straight edges to make sure the lines that I drew were perfect. And I used, I color coded and I used my best handwriting. I printed the best quality pictures off the internet and finally I took a step back. And I smiled. I was so proud that I had actually completed something that I was so confident in and I had worked on it. I had felt myself concentrating and focusing on something that I truly cared about. I got a 97% on that poster, and something just clicked. I had been taught all my life that just because I did well on a test that I don't even remember, that I wouldn't need to work as hard as anyone else. But that's not how it works at all. That's not the point of the GT program, and that mindset shouldn't be the outcome. So how exactly can students grow out of these bad habits? The absolute best answer to that question is effort. It will always be effort. Much easier said than done, I know. But putting in effort, but the best way to put in the effort is finding a reason to motivate yourself. For students, your reason may be, if I, have, if I study now, I'll have time to watch two episodes of The Office tonight instead of one. <laughs> I know that's my reason. For parents, your child might whine, might complain, but a little help, support, and encouragement goes a long way. In fact, I want to thank my own parents tonight for making me work hard all these years, because tomorrow night when I have piles of AP laying homework and an anatomy test to study for, I won't be thanking you. <laughs> for teachers, please understand that just because some students may have passed a test in elementary school, that doesn't mean we don't need help. We need guidance. All students need to be taught work ethic for the future, for when multiplication tables become calculus, and when the mitochondria is no longer the powerhouse of the cell, but instead a double-walled membrane responsible for synthesizing ATP. <laughs> Even though I've grown so much through this struggle, if I would have only known how to motivate myself early on, I wouldn't have fallen behind for so long. And while I might not be 100% yet, the important thing is that I'm working. I'm working on building the skills that others around me have build, been building their entire lives. And I owe it all to motivation. Thank you. Hmm.